Folks, what I want to talk about today is a condenser that has had a compressor replacement. I called a customer and asked her how things are going, and she said, you know, the thing's just not cooling right. Now, we've done this a few days ago, and I said, what do you mean it's not cooling right? She said, well, the indoor unit's running, and it cools, then it quits cooling, and the temperature goes up. She leaves her house set on 74, and she says sometimes it'll go up to 78, then it'll cool back down. I said, well, that doesn't sound right. So I come on out here, and I realize the problem. I turned it on, and when I first turned it on this morning, the thing was running fine. I even stood there and said, yes, ma'am, it's all working perfectly. I checked the line and set, and it was cold, and everything's working fine. So we walk around the corner, we're talking, and all of a sudden I hear a buzzing sound uh, on the motor, okay? I said, hold on a second, that doesn't sound. So what I want you to do is listen. So here's what happened. The compressor failed because the condenser fan motor quit working. It was working intermittently. So when my technician came out and replaced the compressor, the motor was running fine because it was all cool. So he puts the compressor in, does what he needs to do, turns it on, does the sub cool, and goes on his merry way. We're thinking it's all done. So today when she called me, I come out here and I hear the compressor running and the fan's not running. So that's the part I want to talk to about technicians, is when you have a bad compressor, you really want to make sure the culprit of the cause of the bad compressor is not the motor. That happens about 50% of the time, okay? So turn the unit on and let it run for 45 minutes or an hour and then follow up the next day with a phone call and even if you have time maybe it'll run by but you want to make sure that motor's spinning. This particular motor is a ream motor and this unit has low voltage and high voltage. Okay so what's happened the thermostat's calling for it to come on but it's not getting the signal. I'm just going to turn it on. I want you to hear something real quick. Listen to this. Now, you see the motor's not running, but the compressor is running. So what happens, listen to that winding. Hear that winding? Okay, what's happening is because that motor is not moving, dissipating the heat off the coil, the high side is going through the roof and it'll kick out on thermal overload. The compressor will go out, it'll overheat, and it'll sit there for a couple, three hours before it kicks it back home. That's why she was saying she leaves it on 74 and then get to 78 or 79 because it would take an hour or two for that compressor to cool down. I just want to show you the wiring on this particular unit because a lot of people don't, do not realize that a lot of the newer motors have high voltage and low voltage. And if you look right here, here's the where the wires come through the uh, housing to get to the thing, uh, to the contactor. Okay, so here's your common and here's your uh, yellow wire going to the contactor. Now here's your blue low voltage and here's your yellow low voltage okay on the side of the contactor. The black and the brown wire are your hot wires going on your L1 and your L2 right back over here. And here's your this uh, green wire with the yellow stripe is your uh, ground by the way. The reason I'm telling you this is because a lot of the new motors that are in the 16 seer equipment now have low voltage going to them and you got to check both parts okay I want to just show you something so you pull out the schematic and, and, and I just pull this apart here so I can get to it so I can show on the video but I always pull out your schematic diagram OFM outdoor fan motor by the way here's the legend if you need to look what anything is it's all right here everything you really need to know about this unit is right here on this cover okay so let's trace it out Yellow wire, contactor coil right there. The blue wire right here, going all the way around, blue. Brown wire going to L1, and the black wire going to L2 right here. Okay, so anyway, what I really want to tell you about this particular system is when you replace the compressor, just take a little more time and pay attention to the motor. Sometimes we replace the capacitors. The ones that's got capacitors, we'll check they'll have a 5 CFM capacitor or whatever it is. Make sure it's not weak. Because if it gets down more than 5% of the capacitance of the capacitor, it'll it'll kick out too. Because they heat up and they kick out. I've had that happen several times too. 
Hey, if you like this video, please share, and please subscribe, and please comment, and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks.